Hello lovely people, welcome to my channel. It's Hila here, Saturday Night Station. Thank you so much for tuning in and I hope that you're having a fantastic day wherever you are today on the 1st of October, which is when I'm actually recording this. And currently in my garden, my hydrangeas are beginning to turn color and dry out and I think that they just represent fall so beautifully because of all the mottled mixed colors so i picked these as part of my floral arrangement that's going to go on the table and i am sending you flowers and good autumn vibes wherever you are in the world so we're here with the october issue of birda which i've had for a while but on account of all of the children going back to school, some starting A-levels, another one starting high school. It has just been so incredibly hectic and busy. I haven't really had time to even get into the sewing cave for two whole months, let alone even decide what to sew from this. So we're going to have a browse through, but it's going to be very much an intellectual kind of looking at the styles, not necessarily seeing what I might be planning to make from this, because I have a lot of things to catch up on already that i want to sew that i have traced from previous 2021 issues but what i am interested in what i found interesting about this issue when i got it was actually having a look at what the bird that designers thought people would want as they would be coming out of lockdown because the designs in this issue they would have come up with these sort of like around you know the first part of the year january february march when lockdown was still very much going on and it's just been fascinating to see how designers, fashion designers in general, have dealt with this, have answered this question of whether people are going to be wanting to get back to, you know, dressing up to the nines or people are going to be sticking to comfort and comfortable silhouettes and comfortable fabrics like during lockdown when a lot of people were forced to stay at home effectively so yeah that it, it is quite interesting when you look around your fashion do let me know what you think in the comments box down below how do you think uh, fashion has answered that question in general because all of the designs all of the things that we're seeing in the stores now those were they had to come up with those whilst we were in the middle of lockdown effectively so yeah here we go with the october issue let us just dive straight in got the line drawings printed out so we've got a couture section here this top i have to admit this excited me in the preview and i think it's got a lot of uh, lovely details clearly this was a dress that has just been shortened into a top but with the line details we can see that we've got some lovely pleating here so we want to have a fabric that holds the pleats because this is clearly supposed to have some volume and also we've got an elasticated cuff and they've double layered it whereby you've got a bustier style top inside with a sheer thing over it. They didn't do that necessarily with the fabric that they've chosen here. I can't see that it's quite a see-through so I can't actually see the inside bit which to me tells me that this is effectively two patterns. You could just skip out that inside bustier and just make yourself this top in a fabric like a cotton poplin. And I think that that's quite lovely. And then over here we have an interesting skirt that I'm still in two minds about these guys with all of that ruching. I'm not too sure how this can be pulled off, whether it can be pulled off, because the picture unfortunately does not necessarily convince me. Um, yeah, what are your thoughts on this skirt? Is this something that you think? I think it's a marmite. Yes. I feel like Berta hasn't given me a marmite in a while and this is definitely a marmite and perhaps it doesn't help that they've used kind of like a almost like a velour type fabric for here and I'm telling you the amount of work that goes into making this skirt look this way is a lot because it's got a zipper on the side and I once had to sew a, a zipper in jersey fabric that had ruching on it and it, it was not fun. Um, so this jacket is coming up later on and we'll do the line drawings um, on there. And then we've got a really lovely, beautiful dual tone um, skirt. We've seen this skirt before. I think that this is the fourth time this year we're getting a skirt like this. And it's got the pockets and it's got the wide waistband. I just love the fabric. I love, love the fabric. I think the dual tone definitely speaks to me. 
Okay, so that first pattern that we saw, we have it here now, but this time it is the dress that was shortened into a top. And instead of having the longer sleeves with the elasticated cuffs, we actually have the flatter sleeve. In just a second, I'm going to go grab a pencil. And we have a pencil, lovely people. Okay, so as we can see, there is the inner bit, the inner bodice uh, thing with... Um, so for me, this was the little bit of incongruence that I experienced when I was looking at this particular design. So if we look at the internal um, structure of it, the internal slip, right, it's got a pencil skirt, it's got a pegged silhouette, which is just going to give you that, you know, dainty walk. But then the external is like this beautifully gathered flowy fabric. And for me, if you're going to be wearing a flowy dress like this, it is meant for dancing in, for being able to twirl around. And I just feel like the pencil skirt underneath fully restricts the movement. So if I were to make it, I'd keep everything the same over here and then just do a lining that's got just as much volume and movement as the skirt itself. And, and for me, that would be like a really lovely New Year's Eve dress of which I'm actually planning on making myself something for New Year's Eve. So, you know, jury's still out whether it's going to be that. Separately, I love the backdrop that they have used for this particular photo shoot. It's so inspirational, especially with these type of paintings. I love that sort of thing. So I was very happy um, with that. And I think the lace is not my cup of tea, but I can see how it might look lovely for for <laughs> for others. But it feels like you're wearing two dresses over one with this particular silhouette. And then we've got a really lovely shawl called jacket that actually has got some shaping at the waist and a tiny little belt. And I do like this in principle. Not a big fan of the fabrics that they have used on here because these colors, don't, they don't really appeal to me. But when I look at the line drawings and I picture this maybe in a charcoal gray, I think that it would look absolutely fabulous and very classy. Make it in a charcoal gray and get a statement silver zipper down here i think i think that this could be a popular one okay and then we've got that skirt again but this time we have it with the jacket and they've paired it beautifully with some jewel tones uh, over here they're just like really high contrast very eye-catching and of course you've got the obi belt um, in the middle and the, and the brooch styling wise some really really great ideas for especially if you're going to get the chance to go to any gatherings or anything like that this would be fabulous but looking at the line drawing we've got the notches here we've got the princess seam lines down here that will give uh, shaping and yeah i just think I think that this could be another popular thing that you could also make in a linen for summer. So not necessarily restricted to the winter fabrics. And then we've got a, a repeat of a, this pattern was in a March, I think it was March 2018 or March 2016. Um, I don't know, issue, but I've seen this line drawing before. I know because I actually traced out this particular pattern to make it from that March issue, except when the March issue it was being used as a bridesmaid's dress. So, you know, it's there. So if you do like this dress and you're thinking of getting the magazine just for this particular pattern, check if you've got the much 20-something um, issue. I will put the thingy on here, which one it is. But yeah, I like the contrast that they have used with the little laces. I've been trying to buy up some lace trims to add more contrasty details to the things that I make. So I think that that is quite a pretty beautiful really like that liked it the first time i saw it in that march issue and i also like it now and then over here we've got a blouse with some pleating detail over here that sort of like curves down and it creates a lovely lovely look and feel and then the sleeve has also got the similar pleating detail so uh i'm not a big fan of this on here especially given where it ends but i think that it is quite lovely over here i just wish i could have used a white not peach like this because it's just not my color and this is the petite pattern and uh, we've got an ad and some haute couture detail and quite a lot of 
stuff about uh, behind the scenes things. And then we've got, this definitely caught my eye because I love roll necks in winter and I love long balloon sleeve styles. And I think that this does have the statement um, sleeve. And I think that that's what stands out for this. And I, this is just going to be another popular one. And of course, this pattern is also available just as the top as well. And I suppose if you really wanted to, you could also just make it into a skirt just by, you know, using it over here. And then just adding an elastic and making it in a jersey or in a ponty. I think it would be lovely. And then we've got um, this top, which is actually just the shortened version of a dress, which has got some really weird, weird looking pockets. Now, the pockets work on the dress, and we'll take a look at those later on. But on the top, I really feel like these pockets would be way, way too shallow to be actually practical or useful for anything beyond just a small tissue paper at most. But once you've used the tissue paper and it's all crum crumpled up, you wouldn't want to have a bulge <laughs> over here. So I do think that they're a little bit impractical, Im impractical on the top practical on the dress but we've got the bust that's for shaping and it's got a zipper at the back over here it's got potential without the pockets and maybe doing a contrasting hem bend over here so i think that this has got potential of being something quite popular possibly making it in a ponty you won't actually need to have the neck band because looking at the picture here it doesn't look like it's very close around the neck it looks like if it were a stretchy fabric you'd be able to pull it um over you uh yeah so i thought that that was cool not a big fan of the mint ice coloring that they have used there but to each their own and then you know those times when you forget your scarf and you're like oh my goodness if only my scarf was sewn to my top i would never forget it then boom bird is like i've got your back this gave me a little bit of a chuckle because i once did something very similar with my kids um coats and mittens because they kept on losing their mittens so i sort of like sewed um, a little bit of elastic which connected the mittens to the sleeve of the coat so that they always had the mittens dangling on there <laughs> it worked it actually worked i mean they're older now so they don't lose stuff but when i saw that that definitely reminded me of that and i was like that could be interesting, could be interesting. Um, but yeah, and then we've got a very uh, simple uh, dress with a cap sleeve and an interesting pleat. And I feel like I've seen this before. I've seen this before in one of the 2010s, I think. One of the 2010s issues. It looks very familiar to me. But very simple, straightforward and down. And what's really nice about this is with V-necks, right? I always find that v-necks come out a lot nicer when they've got a center front um, seam rather than when you have to try and get the v-neck in, you know, just in the fabric by reinforcing. They come out a lot more nicer, a lot less gapier. So it will be interesting to see what the Berta community does with that. And of course, they've included pockets because pockets are everything. So that's a nice little touch and obviously great styling. Um, as well, I like how they've styled it with the turtleneck and the long boots because this is exactly how I would wear it. Personally, I would probably add a belt there just for some waist emphasis. But yeah, I think that one's a good point. Right, some more lovely jewel tones that they have used here. An absolutely gorgeous fabric. I really love this silk fabric that they have used here. I mean, I'd probably be too precious if I had silk fabric like that. And... Um, and I think for me, that's the extent of it. I really like the fabric full stop. I'm not keen on these half, you know, these half button pluckety things. This is just a personal preference of mine, but I kind of feel like make up your mind. Either you're, you know, you're a shirt or you're a blouse or a top because these are so fussy. These are so fussy to make. And I kind of feel like if you're going to go through the hassle of doing buttons and buttons, you might as well go the whole way. But that's just me. Little rant over. Beautiful fabric, though, with an integrated little collar tie over there. Moving quickly on, we do have a lovely coat, which um, I think this would suit, um, I think, most lifestyle needs because it ticks the boxes of, you know, a nice snug collar over there. Tick. Uh, front opening which means that if you get too warm you can easily unbutton it and just let a little bit of air out and then you've got some pockets over there right and you've got um the sleeves they've got the balloon feature that sort of like tapers in there so that you're cuffing yourself and protecting yourself from there so i do think that this this you know i think it's a solid 
a solid plain design that would be suitable for most needs uh, moving on i think that yeah we only had two pairs of trousers in this issue and this is the only pair of trousers so high very high waisted pants um bordering on culotte style given how wide they actually uh, go they've been made in twill here mm, the colors it's the colors for me but yeah that skirt again, this time it's uh, popped up in wool crepe and it is longer. Nothing to write home about. And this is the tall sewing pattern, um, which I think for the tall sizes, they really didn't do much for the tall sizes in this issue. The coat is the featured sewing pattern, which is quite nice. I have a feeling that this one would be quite, quite uh, popular. Right, and then we've got autumn elegance in the form of uh, the top that had the half placket except for it's been changed now into a dress and who it's very this is more for comfort i think and you could easily make this in a ponty or a jersey as well if you wanted to go for a cozier look they've used a viscous crepe here to just give it more of um more of a chic look but i gotta say i'm not a big fan of it and i feel like we've seen this so so many times before now this i feel like this is quite possibly the hero piece of this particular issue i do feel like this is a nice take on a winter jacket so they've to, it's got the raglan sleeve right and it's got the high neck so this is the same jacket that we had uh, before that's got the featured sewing lesson except for they've taken it from just being rather plain over here added some detail a gun flap over there a strap with some hardware and some pocket flaps and then instead of having the pleating we add the belt in and i feel like that makes a huge difference to how it looks and i quite like the fabric that they have used on there a beautiful wool so i think this shows you a great example of how Birder can kind of give you ideas of how things can be adjusted. I mean, granted here they'll provide you the pattern pieces, but you can kind of see how you could take something that's a little bit of a plain everyday silhouette and you can make it into something a little bit more papal, you know. Okay, and then we've got that dress and it's been cut into a top again. It's the colors, man. The colors, I really, really did struggle a little bit with these colors. And then we've got those culotte pants. Um which eh, i'm not too sure about i do think that her bag is cute though love it oh separately nice orange gloves okay and then we've got that uh, dress again but it's been cut into um a top and they've used like a ribbed jersey and i think that this would look really nice in a ribbed jersey and as you can see there it's actually holding the puffiness of the sleeves a lot lot better i have a feeling that this could be another popular one and if you don't like these uncomfortably high, because I do find that this can be uncomfortably high um, roll necks, it's very, very simple to just reduce it to um, a size that you like. So I think this could be a very good staple. And we've got the other tall size pattern, which is just that very simple box, standard box pleat skirt, but it's shorter. Um, yeah, as I said, I, don't, I think for the tall sizes, they didn't get very good in this issue so then here we've got this dress which i expect is going to be incredibly popular because uh, it's very similar in style to a burden 9 2012 dress which is in the top 10 most popular all-time patterns that they have so it's this shift dress silhouette and then it's got the integrated pockets that go in there and as i was saying in the top it doesn't work because the top only goes up to here and you can imagine trying to have like really shallow pockets very easy. but here You've got the pockets that actually really do work quite well. So you have to be careful with your fabric selection here. You can't have fabric that's sort of like it's going to drag down, especially if you're a heavy pocket user. Um, you wouldn't be really using this for phones or anything like that, just for little knickknacks and pockets and what have you. Um, but yeah, I think that this is cute. I think it is going to be popular. This is something that I would love to make if I had time to. And you could have a lot of fun with some blocking, you know, just sort of like have different um fabrics this could be really funky a way of really cheering up winter you know um but yeah i think that this is fab and then we've got the top again um this one is for the petite sizes from 7 to 21 and it's in a lovely silk silk fabric man 
I like the beret, but I can't carry off a beret. <laughs> and then we've got um, the dress that's also from Berta 9 2020. I think it's the wrap dress. And I have made this. This is a banging style dress. Oh, except for the difference is that with the 9 2021, the skirt itself also had a full panel here. But this one doesn't. Of which... I think, if I have to be honest, I prefer this one because it does feel like the 92021, lovely as it is, it does feel like it's a little bit wasteful with the fabric because you have to have these two front skirt panels and they're over large so that they can overlap. But what makes the dress really nice when I'm wearing it is the faux crossover front over here. That's the thing that makes it nice. So I think that I would definitely be taking this tip on board and the next time that I make the 9 2020 dress I won't bother with having the bottom bit because it's it's a full wrap dress it's not an actual wrap dress because the waist is completely connected with an elasticated band but anyway I do think that this is quite nice I like the big bold flowers that they have used not necessarily the colors but I do like the big bold flowers and I do like that I got an idea for how to improve on a pattern that I really liked from a previous issue without having to go through the hustle of retracing everything and it's got really cute sleeves as well and then we have a really cute little blazer jacket very preppy it is a little bit out of place with the theme that they have used everywhere but I think that you kind of need to tick the box for blazer jackets when you're doing fall issues, but quite cute. And what have we got here? Oh, I accidentally ripped my page, a page because it had this thingy stuck on there. So yeah. And then they had an issue on perfumes and I was so excited because I do uh, love perfumes. I discovered perfumes last December and I was like, I actually have this one. I love, love this perfume, especially in winter. It's such a beautiful one. I tried this one, didn't like it too much. I also tried this one and I also tried um, the Terra di Gioia and I didn't like it. So yeah, but this was nice. <laughs> I was like, yay, my two loves are intersecting. Although the perfume is more of a new love. Okay, and then we've got a really lovely statement retro model jacket here, which has been made in uh, like, you know, those fur, uh, fur ones. I had hoped for a tutorial on how to make this simply to learn how to work with these sorts of fabrics because it does look very cozy, it looks very comfortable and I think it would be perfect for fall. Um, so yeah, so I thought that mm, not too bad, not too bad. And then we've got um, the plus size section on Birda is very much boho and they've got this very expansive, outdoorsy, very aspirational feel and I love it. It just made me feel so good when I was looking through it, you know, because uh, that's, that's the joy of the fashion magazine, fashion sewing magazine that you get with them. Um, Burden. But yeah, I really like the style of this dress. It's got the asymmetrical hem over here, the handkerchief hem, which I think is always kind of like you're giving yourself apostrophes as you're walking. And beautiful realization with the fabric that they used over there. It's like, you know, really feel good, feel free. And then there's a statement poncho, which is very punchy. It's a punchy poncho. <laughs> I just made that up. Um, and it's got pockets as well and an integrated scarf. So I think that this is something that is incredibly, incredibly useful to have. And it looks like it would be quite easy to sew up. It's only been given two dots. So I was like, nice one, nice one. And then it's got the boys patterns, which don't normally show up a lot in the kids section. But when they do, they really are worth it. So this duffel coat is absolutely fabulous and it's in sizes 104 to 128 which means I could make it for my third son is the only one that's probably in this age group but the problem is he gets hand-me-downs from <laughs> my first and my second son but I do think that for those that do want to sew something a little bit special this would be it and the nice thing with duffel coats like this is that they do last for ages and your kids will be wearing them for at least two to three years because they are quite roomy so I thought that that was a nice addition and then we've got um, this top here, which has got an empire, a curved empire line with some pleated detail and the gathered panel at the bottom. And I think it looks lovely in the blue over here. I, I really do. I really do like it. And I like the little detail that there's a little tie belt over there that you can make a cute little bow with. 
fabulous and then we've got some trousers for the boys here um, which is really great and then we've got the poncho but this time it's in a checkered fabric and you can see how useful this would be like if you're going for an after dinner walk or an evening walk you know because you you warm up so quickly when you start walking you want something that is easy for you to open up so that you can you know cool down easy and i think that this is very very useful to have and then we have a very interesting boho style uh, top here that's got sort of like the drop shoulder and the rounded yoke and we've added volume by giving pleats now when i've seen styles like this before they've done gathering on it and i think it is an interesting feature that they have pleating and it's visible on this side and then in elasticated ways and there's some bust shaping and i think that it looks nice i probably wouldn't wear it with a skirt personally i think it would go nicer with the jeans but it's a fabulous boho style thing and then we've got the top peplum style with an integrated scarf this is gorgeous i think that this is fabulous and i think that this is going to be another popular one and we've got some trousers the second the only other second pair of uh, trousers in this uh, issue and it's just a straightforward culottes again with some detail here where they've just done the top stitching along the waistband fabulous and we've got a sweater for the boys wish they'd done a little thing for the flat cap <laughs> and how cool is this i just thought that the fabric selection for this particular um, style was just a banging and how they've used the green on the bust and then there's the mustard down here and the blue over here and then there's just the entire photo shoot is just so gorgeous so atmospheric with all of the clouds there I loved it. So when I walked away from browsing through this issue, I came away with a very strong idea of how I would love to have a boho autumn, you know. And it's those little things, those little things that I um, that I do like about uh, sewing with Berda effectively and receiving the Berda um, magazine. So that's what we have. And it's a little tutorial for some pumpkins here. That's all that we have in this issue. And as I said, because I currently um, have my hands pretty full with um, all of the stuff that's going on with the family, I haven't actually stopped to think what I might sew out of this. So I don't have any solid sewing plans. I know that I definitely like number 111 if I had the time to. I like number 119 as well, as well as number 118. But at this present moment, there isn't a plan to sew anything from this because I do have a lot of sewing to catch up with. Now it's your turn. Let me know if you're lucky enough to have time to get into your sewing, Kevin. You're going to be sewing anything from this issue. What will you be sewing from this issue? Let me know in the comments box down below. If you haven't already, do subscribe. I will be putting out videos more regularly. And until I see you next time, lovely people, happy sewing. Bye.